Buckle up, folks, because it's time to dive into the thrilling world of Dangerous Lies, the movie that was released in 2020 and probably still giving people nightmares to this day because of how boring it was. I'm V, your humble host from Movies Hunter, and I'm here to take you on a wild ride. We open in Chicago, the land of deep dish pizza and even deeper plot holes, where we meet Katie, a young waitress who is apparently too busy working at a diner to afford a decent life. She wakes up her husband, Adam, who has been busy falling asleep over some books at the diner. They want to spend more time together, but who has time for that when you're too busy working and studying to afford a decent life? But then, in an unexpected twist, a man walks into the diner with a gun and tries to rob the place. Adam, being the hero that he is, grabs a pan and takes down the robber in one swift move. And just like that, the robber is sent to prison and Adam's hailed as a hero. Four months later, Katie found herself in the most thrilling and exciting job of her life, being a subscriber of this channel. Just kidding, but she was a caretaker for a wealthy old man named Leonard. Now, Adam is too busy being unemployed and failing to find a job, but who cares about him, right? Katie, being the brilliant financial planner she is, was beyond frustrated with their situation and had no idea how they were going to meet and meet. So she does what any normal person would do and goes to Leonard's house for some advice. And surprise, surprise, Leonard tells her that he keeps hearing strange noises in the house, but don't worry folks, Katie assures him that it's just his imagination playing tricks on him. Feeling generous and in the mood to help, just like a sim lord, Leonard offers to give Adam a job as a garden person. Adam jumps at the opportunity and finally has a way to contribute to society. But wait, there's more. A real estate agent named Mickey, who is so fun and is always on my mind, comes knocking on the door trying to convince Leonard to sell his beloved house. But Katie, being the loyal friend she is, tells him that Leonard has lived in the house his entire life and will not sell the property that easily. Finally, the moment of truth arrives when Katie opens her next paycheck, only to find out it is way too much than she is supposed to be paid. It's a mystery, folks, but Katie, being the genius she is, quickly realizes that Leonard must have done something to help her with her financial problems. Well, 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 Katie is trying to be the good guy here and return the money. Ain't that just precious, but of course, good old Adam knows what's best, right? Because, let's face it, bills gotta be paid. In the next day, surprise, surprise, Leonard's actually found dead in his cozy little attic chair. But don't worry, Katie, Adam's here to comfort you. Oops, wait, what's this? A chest filled with stacks of cash? Well, Leonard, you sneaky devil. But since he has no family, it's all gonna go to the government anyway. But don't worry, because Adam has got a plan. Leonard wanted to help Katie and would have wanted her to have the money, right? So, you know, convenient. Fast forward to the cops showing up and Detective Chesler is trying to piece together what happened. But of course, Katie and Adam ain't got nothing to hide, or do they? But what's this? When Adam goes to collect the cash, he hears someone downstairs. Curiosity killed the cat named Adam. Next thing you know, he is knocked unconscious, but no worries. He calls Katie when he wakes up and fills her in on the details. Katie is beyond furious at Adam for being so careless, wondering how in the world he managed to get attacked. As they try to piece together who could have possibly done this to him, they decide to take the cash and run to the bank to put it in a safety deposit box. Because, you know, nothing screams we're innocent like cutting money in a bank. On top of that, they've got the lovely Mickey, the agent from before, tailing them everywhere they go, like a creepy stalker. At Leonard's funeral, a woman named Julie approaches them and drops the bombshell that she was Leonard's attorney, and apparently, Leonard had called her a few weeks ago to handle his will, in which he leaves everything to Katie. Talk about a plot twist. Katie is in shock and doesn't know what to do, but Julia kindly offers to stay and help her through this transition since Leonard had already paid her retainer. As they move into Leonard's house, Adam starts talking about all the fancy vacations, luxury cars, and living the high life, but Katie reminds him that they need to be careful and not get too ahead of themselves. Because, you know, being attacked and having someone following you everywhere, that's not a red flag or anything, am I right? Adam then gets a call from the police, inviting him to come down and make another statement about the diner robbery that happened five months ago. He agrees, thinking that he's finally going to get some answers about the case. But when he arrives, he's told that no one actually called him. He tells Chesler about the call and also about the incident that happened at the diner. Chesler then drops the bombshell that the assailant from the diner robbery was killed in his cell a few weeks ago. As if their date couldn't get any worse and I don't get any more creeped out, Mickey tries to pursue Katie to sell the house. 
But Katie, being the smart woman she is, refuses, saying that I am the owner now. Deal with it, bro. Later that day, Katie tells Adam about Mickey and that he is trying to persuade her to sell the house. When Chesler learns that Leonard left everything for Katie, she gets suspicious. She reveals that no one from the police station called Adam, which Katie didn't know about. Later, when Katie confronts Adam about the call, Adam says that he doesn't know who called him. He also tells Katie that he was being followed by someone when he went to the bank. Katie realizes that Mickey might have probably called him down to the station so that she would be alone and he could come over and try to intimidate her. Katie is having a panic attack because she's afraid the cops will find out and they will lose everything. Meanwhile, Adam is too busy counting a stack of cash to care. But when Katie goes snooping around at the gardening shed, she uncovers a little secret room filled with uncashed checks and a rotting corpse. Oh, and let's not forget about the bag of diamonds, it's a true thriller. But instead of calling the cops and risking it all, Adam decides to take matters into his own hands and dispose of the evidence. Because nothing says thrilling like a little corpse disposal. And Katie, well, she's just happy as long as she has Adam. Because apparently love conquers all, even rotting corpses and bags of stolen diamonds. One day, Chesler wants to know if little Miss Innocent over here, Katie, knows anything about some guy named Ray. Oh, but it's not just any guy, it's the guy who actually tried to rob the diner and just so happens to be a janitor at Adam school. Talk about a small world. Chesler just wants to protect Katie from being dragged down with Adam. But wait, what's this? The next day, Katie spills the beans to Julia about the money and diamonds. And surprise, surprise, the cash is missing from the deposit box. Looks like Adam is ready to skip town and leave Katie holding the bag. But don't worry because Julia has got a plan. She will just hold off Chester from getting that little search warrant for the house and make sure Adam stays put. Easy peasy, right? Well, 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 looks like our dear pup Chester discovers Ethan's body and a suspicious check from Leonard. Katie comes home to find Adam packing up their things and the money. But it gets juicier. Adam reveals that Mickey... The supposed real estate agent is actually an ex-con just released for robbing a jewelry store of three million diamonds. And surprise, surprise, Ethan was his accomplice. But before Katie can even process this, Adam suggests they flee. Isn't that sweet? He is not leaving her after all. But just as they are about to make a run for it, who should show up but the charming Mickey himself holding Katie at gunpoint? Adam, being the hero he is, aims his own gun at Mickey, but he is no match for a career criminal. Mickey shoots Adam multiple times and knocks Katie to the ground. But before he can finish the job, Adam manages to shoot and kill Mickey. Yep, Mickey, you're so fun, but you are so dead. Katie, heartbroken, holds Adam as he whispers something about the garden and dies. Just then, Julia saunters in like she owns the place and informs Katie that they need to find those shiny little rocks before the cops show up or else they will be knee-deep in legal trouble. Katie starts putting two and two together and realizes Mickey probably read her book on Leonard's beds and offed him with an overdose. But she can't help but wonder why Mickey would shoot Ethan. Julia starts ranting and raving about how absolutely idiotic you would have to be to shoot someone over three million dollars in diamonds. And then it hits Katie. She never mentioned how many diamonds were in play. But before she can say anything, Julia snatches up Mickey's gun and drops the bombshell that she's a public defender who got Mickey's case and got him off for just two years. Together, they had been trying to track down Leonard's diamonds, but they never found them. That's when Katie makes the realization that the will was fake. But Julia pleads with her, telling her that Leonard would have given her the house anyway, and begs Katie to tell her where the diamonds are. But Katie is not stupid. She tells Julia that Adam hid the diamonds and she doesn't know where they are. Even if she did, she wouldn't tell her. So Julia aims the gun at Katie, but just as she's about to pull the trigger, Chester comes in like a knight in shining armor. Julia tries to shoot Chester, but Katie pushes her, giving Chester enough time to shoot Julia dead. Four long months later, Katie is finally getting her hands dirty in her garden, all while being heavily pregnant, because nothing screams thriller like gardening. Suddenly, in walks Chester, bringing the exciting news that the case is finally closed and Adam is off the suspect list. Finally, Katie takes a deep sigh. Chesler informs her that they searched the entire house but never found the diamonds. Imagine that. Katie would rightly respond. Chesler then takes her leave and Katie turns on the sprinklers, heading inside. But as the water begins to wash over her garden, a glimmer catches her eye. The diamonds, hidden in plain sight all this time, are finally revealed. And so this was the story of Dangerous Lies. Did you like it? Please like the like button and subscribe. I'm gonna see you soon. See you in the next one. Bye.